Good morning. It is good to be in the house of God with his children and to worship the Son of God most high and to remember that he came. Will you pray with me? Father God in heaven, we love you. And we thank you for sending Jesus. In the miraculous way that you brought him into our presence. And the glory that surrounds the moment. And we thank you for his love for you and his love for us that he would come. And we want to worship you and him with all of our being this morning. Bless us as we try. In Jesus' name. Amen. If you have your books that are funny, I'd like you to turn back to Song Silent Night in 577. We'll talk about it in just a moment. In 1914, there was a war going on between Britain and Germany. And there was a very special line of demarcation going between the two battles that were the two armies that were fighting. They were so close together in the trenches that they could hear each other talking. In between that no man's land, there were bodies laying from war. Their comrades laying in between them on the ground. And it was freezing cold, and there was water in the trenches. And they began to sing. First in German. The German soldiers began to sing. They lit candles and put them on trees in the trenches on their side. And the British guys didn't know the words they were singing because they couldn't speak German. But they recognized this tune. And they began to sing. And as they sang and got down to the fourth verse, which I'd like to sing first verse and the fourth one. I'm going to have to have some help getting it going, but I'll depend on you guys. When they got to the end of the fourth song, the German soldiers without guns came out of the trenches. Mm. And the British soldiers without guns, hands lifted up, came out of the trenches. And they met each other in the middle and hugged and greeted each other and finished the song, verse 4. But the ugly part is, at the end of the song, they went back to the trenches and picked up their weapons. <laughs> but this song is so beautiful because of what happened on that side of the night. And so I would like to sing verses 1 and 4. Would you do that with me? It was a very important period of time 
It was a miraculous sign that God was among his people because at a very old age, his mother was conceiving him in the womb, and his father was a high priest. We talked about his song. He went and he sang. But this is different. This is even more exciting, more hard to describe. But there's a time when Caesar, not knowing what he was doing, within God's plan, that had been prophesied for the years, was taking part in something that had never been done in his reign before. He called all the people to return to the house of their beginnings and to register for taxes. Caesar had no idea how this story would unfold. This is the first time that this had been done, so Joseph, knowing that he wanted to be a citizen under the control, gathered up his pregnant wife to make the 70-mile journey in the last month of her pregnancy. I don't know if you ladies who have babies have thought about how this would change your life to go that far on a donkey or walk while you're so pregnant. That was a story of itself. They get to the town of Bethlehem, a town where David's family had originated. And all of the prophets of old had said through the lineage of David and the house of David, the Savior would be born. And just not coincidental that they ended up in Bethlehem by divine appointment the time that she would have this baby. But she went to this town, and there in the town was so full of people paying taxes that there was no place for them to stay the night. But there was a place, probably a cave in the back of a home, where they kept their animals at night. And this owner said, you can sleep in the stable if you like. And it just happened, not by coincidence, that that's the time that Mary came forth and delivered her baby in the house of David in Bethlehem. In the exact moment, it was not a coincidence, it was divine. You can read about this in the Old Testament and know exactly what's going to occur because we've seen it from this perspective. But as this is happening, it's, it's just a glorious thing. Before this birth occurs, there are three other songs that have been sung. Songs that we don't sing very much at all, but songs that tell the people's joy for Elizabeth being pregnant at an old age, for Zachariah being able to have a son, that would carry the message of the Christ. For Mary to sing. But this morning we're going to look at one that's a heavenly song. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken in the entire Roman world. What a job that would be. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria. And everyone went to their own town to register because the Romans were powerful and they tell you to do something you do. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee and Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David. That was divine, prophesied throughout the prophets of old because he belonged to the house of David and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged betrothed which is way better than just pledged, but betrothed to be married to him and was expecting a child. And while they were there at the time, came the baby to be born. It was time. I remember five times in my existence when it was time. Man, what a glorious moment it is. And she gave birth to her firstborn, a son, and she wrapped him in cloths, and she placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. 
And the shepherds were living out in the fields. Shepherds who live in the field don't have showering rights very much. And they live on the ground and they look up at night and see the sky above. And they watch over the sheep. These particular shepherds are said to have been those who were wa watching over those sheep that were being developed and, and born and cared for that would make part of what would become a Passover lamb, a perfect Passover lamb, to be given at Passover. Interesting. And the shepherds living out in the fields kept watch over their flocks at night. And an angel of the Lord. I love angels. Do you love angels? I mean, they're just messengers of God. They're just created beings. They're just God's thing that he does. But I love angels. Angels are mentioned. And we don't talk about angels much because we don't know that much about them, I guess. But really, angels are mentioned 273 times in 34 books of the Bible. Hebrews 12, 22 says there's too many of them to count. In Revelation 5, 11, it says 10,000 times 10,000 angels were there. In Matthew 10, 18 and verse 10, they came just for one child. How did Caesar know? He didn't. But he was under God's control. So Joseph takes his son and goes there and they deliver this baby. And in verse 13 of chapter 2 this is where I want to begin. There is a word there in verse 13. This baby has been born in this little stable. Put in this rock wrapping of cloths and laid in this place where the animals eat. Have you ever seen one of those things? they got slobber all over them. And I'm telling you, they got... Down in the crack is leftover food and, and the dirt on the ground and other things that you would see in that kind of a place were all around. This is not the hill. But it's a special place. A space where lambs were got ready for pasture. Pretty significant that Jesus becomes our Passover. And while they're there, and the baby is there, in verse 13, I brought a firecracker this morning. I was, I'm going to light it and throw it out into the, because I want you to be shocked when it blows up. Actually, it's just a battery, so you don't have to worry. If a firecracker went off this morning right here, and you would jump, and you would jump. And it would be sudden, and you would, like that, jump. Well, this verse starts out with the word suddenly. Suddenly, a great company large number company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God. And we'll talk about that in a moment. We have a picture of a heavenly host. Hopefully we'll get that ready now. We'll put it up. This is an interesting picture. It's a hand drawn. And I don't know if it's even accurate, but I love it. Because the angels are surrounding, and they are so many and so glorious and so powerful. I was always picturing when I was a child that three of them came or four. But the heavenly hosts came. And I'm not sure exactly who the heavenly hosts are, if they're just angels or if all of the people who prophesied the coming of the Messiah that were in the heavenly realm in God's presence, he let them come on this announcement period of time. But they came together and they began to sing. Can you imagine the glory of that song? When the angels of heaven and the starry hosts came and they began to sing a song of praise for the most glorious, second best thing that ever happened on the planet Earth. The deepest, richest gift God could give to let his only begotten son come to the world and be born in this place like that for people like us. Now, I said second best thing that ever happened on the planet. We'll talk about the other later. There's no room in the end. Sometimes we have problems not having room in our hearts for the Lord. We need to make room because he deserves the best place in our lives inside the heart that we have. 
And these angels that came, there are so many angels there, they're singing. Michael, Gabriel, the cherubim, the seraphim. And they're saying, they're, shep, they're singing. They're singing together. And the heavenly hosts are with them. And there's eyewitnesses. Witnesses from the other side. They'll be able to see them. And the shepherds came. They didn't smell real good. They worked all night. They hung out with sheep. They took, they looked toward the heavens a lot, and they were allowed to come to this one time period. They said when they got in this particular time and they saw the star and they knew that something was grand and glorious that's about to occur. It says, they said, let's go to that. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that's happened, which is the Lord, which the Lord has told us about. Let's go check it out. If I had been anything in that period and I saw that star and heard that singing, I would go find out what's going on. What a blessing to be a shepherd that day. Every year we have a Christmas program. We get the little kids out and put the bathrobes on and hold up the shepherd's staff. And they don't understand. They don't think the glory and what was there at the time. But these people, lowly people, regular people, ordinary people, were brought into the presence of the most glorious happening of all history. And they got to go see that baby. I'm blessed a lot. I get to go to the, to the hospital and pray sometimes for babies that are three hours old. The most precious little thing you ever saw. It moves. 27 bones from here to here. 6,000 uh, cells in each eye. The, the bones in an adult are like this big in the ear. And the baby is like that. And they can hear. And God makes glorious, glorious things. But that's not just the baby we're talking about today. We're talking about this infant that God sent so vulnerably into the homes of America, not of, America of human beings. And he trusted them to raise him, knowing exactly how the end would come and the price he would have to pay. And this baby, so precious. Suddenly, a great company of heavenly hosts appeared with the angels praising God and saying or singing, glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. What a song. First verse, same as the last, I suppose. But you can imagine the heavenly hosts, the shepherds are standing there. Mary and Joseph have been in this from the beginning, and they've known that this was what this was about. She was a virgin, and God is sending his only son through her body into their presence, and she gets to deliver this child and hand it over to Joseph, you know, or Joseph take it and hold him in his hands. This is connection with humanity that God would see to it that his only son would come for the redemption of mankind for us. It's a beautiful thing. And they sang, the angels sang, and the shepherds listened, and they came to see and what they saw was God on earth, God in human form, God the Redeemer, the promise of Israel, the descendant of David, that has been prophesied through the ages. The coming of God's favor in the presence of the human race. Been prophesied for years that he would come, and he would come and be born of this virgin. And he was, and the ain't and their shepherds came to see. And they cried out, glory to God in the highest. There's nothing better than being in a relationship with the God of the universe and experience the gift of Christ Jesus who came into the world as human being to gather us up and take us to his home in heaven above. There's hardly anything that compares to this gift. But I said, it's the second best thing that ever happened to mankind. So as they sing together, and it says that Mary treasures up all these things and ponders them over in her heart. As this was going on, Mary is growing spiritually. She's growing in her love for God and, and, and her trust in God. 
that this would happen, that she would be safe, that they would be delivered, and be so beautiful, and he would, he would en encompass mankind, that he would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and would be God's only begotten son. Her relationship to the God of the universe was a co-parent with the Almighty God. So Mary treasured up these things in her heart. She pondered them in her heart over and over. And the shepherds returned glorifying and praising God. They went back to their job, but they took with them this emotion of knowing that God is in the flesh in our presence. For all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told throughout the generations, God is fulfilling his prophecies. And on the eighth day, it was time to circumcise the child. As Jesus is going to follow the law and do what the law says to do. But in this moment, in this place, in this glorious place, shepherds come, ordinary people, and the story begins to be told. While the angels of heaven rejoice and the hosts of heaven sing, glory, glory, glory to God in the highest and peace on and goodwill to men. I love this story. I love to talk about it. I love to hear it. I love to think about how glorious the angels' voices will be when the Lord returns. And I said earlier that this is the second greatest thing that ever happened to mankind. But there's one more thing that is best. <coughs> On the night when he was betrayed, he took bread. Later on in the day, the night, he was betrayed, and the soldiers came. Not shepherds this time, not to worship. But they came and they took him by force. Peter tried to stop it, but Jesus said, put that away. I came for this purpose. It was a great gift of God to let his son be born into a human family and to grow up in a community the time period he was in so that he could live like us and we could identify with him. What a great thing to trust and to give that opportunity to mankind, but the greatest gift God <coughs> ever gave was to say about mankind, they are sinful beyond description. They are not able to be in our presence. They'll never be able to come in this heavenly host with the sins that they prefer have produced in their lives. But I have a plan, a Passover lamb, my only begotten son, so precious in Bethlehem that morning or night, like late night, that I would let him grow and teach and speak and share and love and heal and guide and point and gather these sinful, sinful people who had a debt they could not pay that would keep them out of the presence of the Almighty unless this gift was given. And he allowed his only begotten, precious child, his son, his only son, to go to the cross to take away our sins, to make a way for us to enter into this heavenly host to go in his presence, to be with him forever, to have a house in heaven. And without that, we would not have a chance of going there. There's a story about a guy who was given a gift. It was a very expensive gift. It doesn't matter what it was, but it was a very expensive and very precious gift. And he was given to it, and he took it, and he looked at it, and he set it down next to him, and he talked about it, and he said, thank you for all of that, and I appreciate that, and that's a great gift, and I really enjoy it. And when the day got done, he got up and he left, and left the gift behind. And the host of the house where he was staying and the gift was given said, you left your gift behind, so I'll get it some other time. Not that important, I'll get it some other time. And the gift who, giver who was the host was heartbroken. Because I sacrificed to save the money, I purchased this thing special, just what you needed, and I gave it to you, and it's really special. And I saw you open it, and I saw your eyes when you saw it, and it was perfect. But you just left it sitting on me. No one should ever 
receive the gift of the cross and forgiveness and redemption of Jesus Christ. Behind. The gift was so good and so glorious and so powerful and so awesome and so blessed that this gift of God that he gave on the cross to forgive us of our sins should be gathered up and held so precious in our hearts that we would do what he asks us to do and follow him through the process of the death and the burial and the resurrection so that we could go and join this heavenly realm and sing hallelujah to the Lord God Almighty when he comes. Story of Jesus in 15 minutes. I don't know. I don't know how anyone, I told you at the beginning, I don't know how I'm going to do this sermon because I don't feel capable. It's hard. It's a story that's too big. It's too big. It's so beautiful. It's too powerful. It's so important that we not only see the birth of Jesus, but also his death as a Passover man. These heavenly hosts knew and they say, glory to God in the highest. The story of the resurrection to come. And now we know too. So we ask ourselves as we celebrate his birth, that's just the beginning of the glory story and the best part comes when he comes to redeem his children. Hallelujah to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. Peace on earth and goodwill to men. And the shepherds said, let's go. Check this out. And I pray that if you are not ready to be gathered up to the great hosts of heaven that you will be when we finish this morning, that you will be right with the Lord Jesus Christ, that he would do all that you could to be in that company, knowing you can't earn one moment in heaven. It's a gift. Praise be the God of heaven that he loves his people. And not to send his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but take part in eternal life. This is the story. This is my song, praising my Savior all day long. If you're not ready, be ready. And if you are ready, sing with all your might to the glory of the King. And listen just a little bit once in a while to the angels singing.